Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot where the conversations are pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Did you bring your thinking caps? Because it's time to put them on. Because the conversation starts now. Well, Brains, you know, sometimes you have technical difficulties. And me and Chiquita Gail Lee Lindsay had one hell of a conversation the other day. And it's gone in cyberspace. We're going to do it again for you. Okay, we didn't have practice, practice now. Uh, this woman is so layered. She is so textured. And she's on the edge with me, the place where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Chiquita had a very lucrative career in healthcare for many, many years, decades even. And one day she came to the realization, she said, forget this noise. I want to set myself up for future success. I want to be able to lay back in luxury and just watch the checks roll in. But not only do I want to do that, I want to mentor, mold, and encourage other women to set their self up for success with real estate. Now, she's a real estate investor. And I've just purchased, you know, a little piece of property, and I'm struggling with it because I came to the realization Being a landlord was not for me, but she told me that I'm looking at it the wrong way. Then I need to change my glasses. (laughs) So we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. Thank you so much, uh, Chiquita, for, you know, being such a wonderful person, coming back, doing this again, and, uh, you know, setting us straight and setting us on the right trajectory to set ourselves up for success and retirement. Tell my brains a little bit about you and how you show up in the world, Queen. Well, I'm a I'm a mother, uh, a grandmother, and I'm a caretaker of my 90 year old mother that lives with me. And uh, yes, I, I had a, a career. I thought it was a great career in the hospital field, and worked there for 37 years, almost 38, uh, before I woke up and I quit. Mm. So you know, I'm a baby boomer. So I believe the tale that you get married, have three children, get a house, get a good job, work there for 30 years and then retire happily ever after. I absolutely loved my job in the beginning. And so after being there for so long and having all the seniority, when you've been somewhere for a long time, they tend to run over you. And then as you get up into the years, you start getting these letters that say, you're gonna get X amount of dollars when you retire but you have to work until you're 65, 67. So the paperwork I was getting, and I remember one and I I got it, I really should should, uh, frame it. It says that I was gonna be getting $932 a month, but I had to work another seven years to get it. What? (laughs) I had to be retirement age. That might cover your expenditures, but in today's environment, it's not gonna cover no mortgage. It's not. And that is an issue with women in the world today because we have a greater chance of living and dying and retiring in poverty Mm, mm, mm. because it's not enough money to survive. So I was like, wow, I got to get out of here. It's not going to be enough. What can I do? So I started looking around at things that I could do. And I was like, okay, what am I good at? What am I good at? You always hear out there in the world, you're good at something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of times we women, we're good at everything. Because we're multitaskers. That's right. But what can we do that can bring us money? And so I decided, well, uh, maybe I need a coach. For years, people would say, you need a coach, you need a coach. And I said, well, I'm smart. Smart as, as smart as the average woman. Mm-hmm. Why do I need a coach? So finally, uh, I got a coach. And, uh, and the reason why I picked this particular coach, and her name is Danielle Winningham, is because I would listen to her on Periscope back then. Mm. And so every time she came on, she was singing my siren song. She was saying, why are you working at a job? You're not, it's not that so-called good job. It's not a good job. You can leave. You can use your gift to create abundance. But I didn't know what my gift was at the time. So uh, I thought I'd be a life coach because I was like, just pick something. 
And I even asked her, what can I be? She says, well, maybe a life coach. I said, okay, I'll do a life coach. At the time, she didn't really know I had real estate. So um, I tried doing a life coach. And of course, I was crying with the people as I was coaching them. And I said, no, this is not for me. So finally, I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I said, Let's, let me just pray and say, God, what am I good at? And I would be trying to listen for God's voice. But I didn't know, is God's voice going to be a whisper? Is it going to be a loud thing? Is it going to be somebody else coming and tell me what I could do? And so uh, I prayed and prayed. And finally, uh, I didn't hear anything. I felt empty. So I just decided, I'm just going to work here, whatever. I'm just going to stay to the end. So one day she called me and I didn't want to answer the phone. And at work, you really can't answer the phone in a hospital setting. Mm -hmm. But I kept my phone in my, in my pocket and she kept calling me and kept calling me. I finally picked it up and she says, well, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. What do you want to do? I said, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I broke down. I broke down and cried. I was crying on the job because I just didn't know. I just felt lost. So uh, that was my breaking point. And she says, what do you have? You're kicking money around at your feet. Look in your left hand, look in your right hand. Mm. Well, in 2008, I had bought two little investment properties, but never thinking that they were going to save me. I was trying to save my husband because he was older than I. He was going to retire before I did. I wanted to keep up the income. And so all those years, we managed the properties, no problem. And finally, I said, it's, it's the real estate. I'm just going to do, because I always loved real estate. I was going to be a, a real estate uh, agent. And then I decided I didn't want to be an agent. And you don't have to be an agent to invest in real estate. So I decided to up my real estate game. I resigned from my job. I gave them two weeks notice. I've been there almost 38 years. And I walked down. So I did not retire. And did you, and did you just throw your hands up? Freedom! <laughs> I had no regrets. I've never looked back because I knew what I was going to do was going to work. My fear was staying there another day. Right. And then it turns into, you know, you're disingenuous because it affects every aspect of your life. You're giving all that you have to these patients. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you look in the mirror and you say, you know what? I'm not giving anything to myself. So bravo. You know, I did that. I had a, um, I was working in uh, multi in technology, multimedia projection sales. And the boss comes in one day and he says, you know what? Uh, we need to close this year strong. And if you guys can make me a million dollars in one day, we're going to pop bottles. I'm going to give you some days off. I'm going to give you a few hundred dollars. It's going to be fantastic. Girl, we made a million dollars in one day. And it taught me so much. It taught me how money is energy how it only has the perceived value that you put on it. Right. And that, you know, if you manifest it and ask for it, you can get it, but you, you have to work for it. It's right. not no abracadabra, but girl, I go in after my little vacation, the champagne done wore off and I done spent the money. He calls it a meeting. We get into the office. You know what that joker said? What? You guys did a great job, but yesterday's maximum is tomorrow's minimum. Ooh. Let's work towards a hundred and five million. Girl, I got that little Gucci bag. <laughs> I walked back to my desk. I took all the things that was important and my Rolodex, put on my lipstick, walked out and never turned back. Right. right. Mr. Right. Magnificent looked at me. He said, so you're not going to work today? Oh, I said, oh no, I'm not going to work there ever again. And right. I have not turned around since. Right. But I tell you the churn and the burn of being an entrepreneur is no joke. Right. You do need to have guidance. You, you can't just it. do this willy nilly. You got to have some sort of nest egg because you still got to eat. You still right. got to pay the gas and lights. You still got to keep a roof over your head. Mm -hmm. How did you pick a coach? You know, a lot of people uh, use this big $25 word that they can coach. Well, mm -hmm. everybody is not coachable. Number one, you still got a lot of coaches that are still sitting on the bench. Mm. What did you look for her? What did you look for in your coach? And what did you see exuding out of her that just made you, you know, just want to listen to her and, and, and want to be molded and mentored by her? Well, the first thing she said, she was the vice president of Chase Bank. Mm. And she was already making high six, six figures and walked away from that. 
to make her own money. I was nowhere near six figures on my job. Everything she said related to me. It was like when the pastor's preaching in church and you think he's only talking to you. Her voice and the strength in her voice and her building confidence and courage, if she can do it, anybody, anybody can do it. If you can go in there, April, like you said, you made them a million dollars in a day, you can make your own million dollars for your own business in a day. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so uh, that is what, kept, and the fact that I was consistent in listening to her, every time she came on Periscope, I was there. You can't listen to too many coaches. No, you can't. You got to pick one that you resonate with, one that has the things that you want, or to get you where you want to be. And you got to continue to listen to that one. And I was coachable. You got to be coachable. And you was ready. At, you know? Absolutely ready and determined. And I took action. You went, for the, you went for the breakdown to get the build up. I sure was. And whatever she said it cost for them classes, I was going to pay it, move heaven and earth to pay it. Mm -hmm. That's how important it was to me. That's right. And there's value in investing in yourself, brains. That's what I tell you. You're not investing in Chiquita. Chiquita got it. Okay. Right. But you got to pay for information. You got to pay for knowledge. You don't think she paid for it? Absolutely. You don't think she's still paying for it? She's yeah. still pouring into others. Others are still pouring into her. It's yeah. it's fluid. And so when people say, well, I don't do this and I don't do that. Well, you're not ready. <laughs> no, you're, not. you're not ready. No, no, let me go and ask somebody if this is okay. Because you can't ask people for permission. No, to not, to want do what you, not to do what you need to do. Exactly. Exactly. And I've been with my coach for five years and I will always keep a coach. Wow. that's And that's amazing. Well, you know what? So let's talk about this real estate thing. Okay. I ran this by you the last time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the real estate game here in California is for ballers and shot callers. Right. Uh, right. It's crazy. You know, and you can get a distressed property. You can be sitting there at 2 o'clock in the morning and watch those infomercials. I call them the 1-800 ballroom. Where every, you, know, you go in and you're going to go through this seminar and they're going to take you through this whole... A program on how you'd be able to flip properties and you mess around and end up in foreclosure in the property that you're in because it's a pipe dream. You've got to know what you're doing. Then you got the tenants. Goodness gracious. I'm trying to rent this property and everybody's got a pet. I love <laughs> animals, mm -hmm. but uh, are you picking up the pee pad? Uh, you're uh, gone 14 hours a day. The dog is there by itself, which is cruel. Right. They chewing, or you lonely? You got the the you know I got my place furnished, so you got the dog laying up in the bed with you. It's a lot of liability. The roof, the plumbing, you know the people don't take care of your property. Not and I shouldn't say all, because I was a great tenant, and there are great tenants out there, more so than not. But when you got that hellion <laughs> that you can't get out, you start looking at this and you say, let me sell this. What keeps you in the game? What keeps you churning? What keeps you burning? Wow, let's deal with those infomercials at midnight. You can go and pay $30,000, $50,000 and still not walk away with a property. Mm -hmm. It's all again, you have to follow somebody that has the things you want to have uh, that you can relate to. So as far as tenants, I have long-term tenants. I don't have those problems. Uh, and it's the way I set my properties up. It's the way I vet my tenants that you don't, you can own property and not even be a landlord. The tenant never knows you even own the property. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the key is having the right property in the right area, the right tenant, educating your tenant. Some tenants don't know how to take care of other people's properties. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Making sure that you get paid on time all the time, because that money is my retirement money. And so I, what I do is teach my mentees from the lock on the door to every little bitty thing from the time you pull up in front of that property, mm. everything that you're looking at to make that property clean and safe. My tenants are educated. They know where things are in the property. They know where the cutoff valve is. They know how to change the filter. They know, they get all these instructions. And so they take care of my property. So I've been lucky. And I say it's more than just luck. That's the way I've set them up. Right. And I always get paid on time. 
And every property is not good for everyone. And you know what you got to learn is what is your comfort zone? Now, as far as you're in California, when I have clients all over the United States, when they tell me they live in California, I say, get out. Ah, oh, girl. I it, can't. It I'm, I'm addicted to the sunshine. I can't. But, but you're not going to be able to invest there unless you're already wealthy. Right. So let's grab a property somewhere where you can afford that has a hundred percent cash flow. We don't always buy for equity. Sometimes we buy for cash flow. It depends on your plan. If you're going to retire in five years and you can live off the money that you got, maybe you're not uh, investing for cash flow. You're investing for equity, but you got to be careful because sometimes equity don't come. Right. Tornado come through there and tear up everything, you know? Right. And then you, you got the land and, but putting money away, uh, to continue to have that that cushion in the event that something happens. Because you got slumlords too. Okay? Yeah, I'm definitely not a slumlord. No, well, I know you're not. But right. you've, you've got um, people that are not taking care of their properties. They're not reinvesting. They're not upkeeping. It's mm -hmm. not going to grow. It's, it's not, not. going to mature. It's going to deteriorate. Right. right. And so, you know, when you're looking at a property and you have to put money into it, I look at it as putting money into it and it's going to come back to me. Mm. A lot of people, when they're investing, they think when they're putting money in there, they don't want to put that much money in it because they think it's going to save them money. So I look at something as an asset. As I pull up in front of distressed property, the first thing I'm doing is the roof good. What's the outside look like? I'm counting the windows. I'm looking at everything all around on the outside before I get in and I'm counting up numbers. Mm -hmm. And then I'm looking at where is it at? How much can, what's the most I can get rental? How long would it take to pay me back? See? All of that is all the factors of making sure you got the right property. Is there a liquor store on the corner? Where is our school? Is there, are the people next door 24 hours a day sitting on the porch? Mm. There's a lot of factors to make sure that you get a great property, but you want to invest where you can afford to invest. Right. And you use other people's money, but you don't want to leverage everything you own. Absolutely. Absolutely. That makes perfect, perfect sense. It's all a strategy and a plan, April. Well, it, and it's a checklist and brains, you know, you need to go through that because again, I, my parents owned property and seamless didn't have no problem. My mother, my mother was the sweetest landlord ever. They'd be sick. She'd take them something to eat and mm -hmm. oh, this, you know, let me go cut the flowers or whatever. <clears throat> but Again, people are very combative and especially what happened in 2008. See, you came up because you were able to invest. You took advantage of it. But what just happened through the pandemic, a lot of landlords didn't get paid because employees weren't going to work and they weren't getting paid. That's why we're saying also that you need to have a nest egg that you can cover the mortgage because the mortgage company is not going to your tenant. The mortgage company is coming to Chiquita in April. Yeah, but listen to this. Of all the properties I own, none of them were got affected by the forbearance. Wow. What a blessing. Now, other investors did because it was the way they rented their properties. So now some of those landlords have a bad taste. They want to get rid of those hundreds of properties. Mm. But the whole time, even when the government shut down, all of my rents were paid. Mm. So that's how I teach my mentees. Yeah. But I've had one what? eviction since I've been in the business. Wow. But, you, but you, you went to the Lord before you went to anybody else. And that is the ultimate landlord. Okay. Yeah, but it's teachable. But you do need God behind you. You do. Or or some sort of um, resonance to know that it's beyond you. Mm -hmm. And that you need help. That you need support. Mm -hmm. So you've taken all this wisdom and you've put it inside the pages of not one but two books. Share your books with us. Oh, I have a book. Well, I got two. Uh, God, Lee, I got quite a few. Women get left behind in real estate. Mm. All women want to be a real estate agent. So they made investors a lot of money being a real estate agent. And the majority of agents are working a part-time job while being a real estate agent. What's wrong with that? Now, right now with the economy, everybody wants houses, but agents are, and people are getting outbidded. So they have the buyers, but there's nothing out there that they can buy because everybody's outbidding everything. Mm -hmm. So you can do real estate investing without a license. 
if you want to be an investor. If you want to be an agent, yes, you do need a license and go to school to get your license. But not yes. only are you an author mm -hmm. and an investor, but girl, you told me you got your contractor's license. I love that. That excited yeah, I, me. You should got her own tool belt, Brains. <laughs> I got my own tool belt, but listen, I don't pick up a hammer and I don't pick up a nail. See? So that's just some women like to get in there and, and DIY. I'm not the one to do that. I point, move this, move that, hit this, move that. So you don't have to have those skills to invest in real estate. But if that's what you want to do, now my daughter's an agent and she'll climb in up and in and out of trucks and she'll nail stuff and she'll carry stuff. I don't do that. But it's not the fact of actually getting, you know, the hands-on labor. It's understanding what is needed. It's understanding the calculations. It's understanding what windows cost, what right. flooring is, uh, right. what design looks like. So right. there's an ingenuity there. And everybody's not going to go to that. But what you do right. need to do is have the information. Right. Have you a strong team. Right. You know, have a, a great um, uh, a plumber, a roofer. Right. Licensed uh, electrician. Licensed right. electrician. Right. Have these people on your team. Build a relationship with them. Right. So that when you send them in, everything is seamless. When you call them and you have a property management company, you know that they are going to respond to your tenants. Absolutely. Because there's a lot of them that are making money. And, you know, I've heard people say, you know, I called them and they haven't come out and do this and do that. But if you're a tenant, good Lord, and you know that your little boy and put the G.I. Joes in the toilet. Uh, you need to fix that. Right. The landlord's going to fix it. Right. That's now, in your lease. It's how you cover yourself is in your lease also. Okay. So now give us a little uh, ins and outs on a lease versus a month to month. I'm a month to month because I want to get you out of here. I got to get you out of there. Well, you know, both of them have its advantage. Uh, all of my properties are yearly leased. And that's, they're guaranteed to be there for a year unless they do something that I terminate the lease. I've never had to terminate the lease. You're, they're educated on the do's and the don'ts. And the lease is like 32 pages long. Mm. There's a lot of things and it's repetitive. Wow. And there's some sign-off sheets. Uh, they're, being, they're being, when I say educated, you'd be surprised young mothers don't know a lot. They don't know not to pour grease down the sink. They don't know where the cutoff valve is. And they're going to call you and say, oh, the whole kitchen's flooded. Well, just cut off the main valve, cut off the cutoff valve. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to pull out a filter, you know, in a furnace. So I'm going to gift them a whole year of filters and I'm going to date it. And they have a sign-off sheet. They're shown how to pull it in and pull it out, even though it's so simple. So they're being educated to take care of my property. Also, if I'm showing ownership, I want them to show ownership. Right. In the first year when they're there, I may give them a $25 gift card for their one year anniversary. Mm. So, you know, those type of things. So it's educating your tenant and uh, fire safety, how to, you know, how to put out a fire. I know my daughter loves to call me, And I've had a fire in a rental property. Mm. Don't call me first, call the fire department. Right, right, yeah. right. So uh, uh, my daughter was uh, <laughs> in our rental and the water was leaking from the faucet. Mm -hmm. And I came all up out the ground and, you know, you didn't you didn't turn off the water and the, the pan filled up. Do you know that you upstairs and it could have went down the floor? And she goes, Mommy, she says, I've never had my own spot like this. I didn't they, know. They so don't know. education was key. And right. I had to dial back and say, you know what? Okay, let me tell you how to handle these top 10, top 15 things in the event that something happens. Right. So, Grace, take that into consideration. Don't mm -hmm. just give them the key and say, here, mm -hmm. you know, you wouldn't just give them the keys to your Mercedes Benz and say, here, you exactly. give them instructions on what you want them to do. Same right. thing with your property. And they want to take ownership because they want to live somewhere nice. Uh, and they do. And, you know, I give them a security door, but I let them know it's there for their protection. But when it breaks, I will remove it. Mm. Now, do you do annual inspections on your property as well? Yes, they're man it's mandatory. Yeah. See, you 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 got to be on top of it. You got to be on top of it. Right. So, but see, I have the city behind me because the government is paying my rent. Mm. That's why I got through foreclosure. Wow. Wow. So that, that's and I set it up correctly. So no matter what happens, I'm getting a government payment. And to be in a government, they have to inspect. 
because the property has to be safe for the tenant and they want to make sure before they pay the money. Absolutely. And plus, I never want to be sued. So if somebody's looking behind me, I know I'm always on it. Do you keep like an uh, attorney on retainer for I two, evictions? I have two attorneys, but I've only had one eviction. But if I need one, I can grab them. Yeah, see, you got to do that. You have to build a relationship. Everybody's not able to afford a, a attorney on retainer, but have a relationship. Know that there is somebody in your Rolodex that you can call. Have that number right next to the plumber. <laughs> I've never had to call them, but the key to having the right attorney is have one that has investment problems. Mm, so they understand. They speak yeah, the language. Right. That's, that's perfect. So let's ask you some fun questions down there in Kentucky. When I come to Kentucky to visit you, because I'm coming to Tennessee, I told you that when I come across the border, what is there for me to do? Well, if you come the first Saturday in May, you'll get to come to the Kentucky Derby. Yes, ma'am. I love it. The fastest two-minute sport in history, a horse race. And, of course, we're the home of Muhammad Ali. So you'll get to visit his, his childhood home, his museum, his downtown. Uh, we also have Louisville Slugger. We make bets for all the pro teams. Uh, we have Bourbon Row, because you know Kentucky is the birthplace of bourbon. So there's all types of bourbon where you can just taste bourbon all day. Uh, and there's just a lot of things. We're right on the waterfront. Now, it's not blue water like California. You're going to feel sad when you look at the Ohio River. <laughs> there's no <laughs> palm trees. <laughs> but we're known, okay. for, we're known for our parks. Uh, we have Mammoth Cave. We don't have any mountains with snow on this list, but we do have Mammoth Cave, which is the largest cave system in the United States. And that's just a few things you can do here. Well, that's beautiful. Now, mm -hmm. uh, what you cooking down there? What's one of your, your best recipes? What, what can you really cook? Wow. You know what? Lasagna. Mm. But, you know, in the years when my kids was little, I cooked everything. So now I don't really cook like that. I can give my husband a peanut butter sandwich. My mama's good. She is, she wants old time food, beets, butter beans, white beans, you know, that type yeah, of stuff. Something <laughs> soft, easy to digest, and it will keep right. it full. And yeah. thank you for, you know, I don't have to thank you for taking care of your mother, but I thank you for uh, being loving and caring and supportive enough to take care of her. I took care of my mother till she was 91 too. And yeah. it's such a blessing. It is a blessing. It's, it's really a blessing is. to be able to take care of your parents. You had the nursing background. But it's also, and I say this with great humility, it's also a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. A lot of times there's things you want to do. Sometimes you are emotionally uh, overrun. Sometimes they just disgruntle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you do to, to luxuriate? What do you do to make yourself feel good? Outside of the kids and the husband and all that, what do you do for Queen Chiquita? Well, I need to do more for myself, but you know, I love music. I like to go to concerts. That's uh, really the way that I relax. And one of these days, I'm going to take a trip, a luxury California. <laughs> I, don't know about, I don't know about California, maybe, but I'm going to take a trip. But basically what I do, I love real estate. Mm -hmm. I love it. I enjoy it. Real estate is addictive. You mm -hmm. get that first property, you want more, you want more. I like yeah, I know it. It happened to me. Uh, yeah, and of course, the house behind us is one of our flip houses. We love taking things and make them beautiful. And that is beautiful. That is beautiful. How long does it take you to, I know it depends on each house, but do you have a timeline? Do you say, okay, I'm going to invest 30 days in flipping this property with my team and then get it back on the market? Well, it depends on the house. It's kind of hard to flip a house in 30 days. It uh, depends on what needs to be done. The kind, we do uh, signature flips. And it normally takes us anywhere from three to six months. Uh, this property behind us took us about seven months. And the one we just finished took a lot longer because of COVID, mm -hmm. uh, you know, inspections and everything delayed. Uh, but the average flip shouldn't take you any more than uh, 45 to 90 days. And when you're using somebody else's money, you're on a time limit. Right, right. Mm -hmm. now, 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 fill in that white space when you say you're using somebody else's money. How we get somebody else's money to use? Well, we never flip with our own money, very little. Uh, there are hard money lenders that will give you money to buy the house and rehab the house. 
And then when you resell it, you pay the hard money lenders back and then you keep the profit. Mm. So that way you don't have all your money tied up. Okay, so when you, have a hard, when you have a hard money lender, is their name uh, on the deed as well as yours? Yes, their name is on the deed. They actually own the house because if you do not pay for it, they can foreclose on the house. Okay. Now, a hard money lender is not going to lend you any money if the house isn't worth anything. So, you know, how it goes is you find a property you want to flip, flip, you uh, count the house and see how much it's worth, how much is it going to take to rehab it. You take it to your hard money lender. He sends appraiser out. He looks at the numbers and he says, yes, you'll be able to make money off of this property. Uh, and and here's, here's the money to purchase it. And here's the money to rehab it. Mm, mm, mm. And then you pay. Now you can hold the loan anywhere up to 12 months, but it's going to cost you more money. There are origination fees. You could be paying anything anywhere from eight to 10% on that money, maybe a little more. And, you know, we've always been taught to get the lowest interest rate, but it doesn't count when you're making money right. because without their money, you couldn't have made nothing. Right, right. So, you know, to shop a, a hard money lender is like shopping a venture capitalist. You got to be in that in that stream, you got to network, you got to know who those people are, and you got to make sure that you ain't dealing with somebody that's unethical, that's a loan shark, right. that's going, you're going to get the property, you're going to do the work, all that, so again, a coach brains is essential, right, a coach is essential, please tell my brains how to get a copy of your book, uh, your books, you had another book that you showed me the last time, I was thinking, stop, I got a, a stop working broke, it was the first book I ever wrote and I was disgruntled on the workplace. And I go back and read that now and I was like, wow, that was me. Wow. That, was me. that was me when I felt like I was trapped. Mm. So uh, I have quite a bit of things, but I like to give uh, uh, them uh, your ebook. So it's real talk. It's real talk, real estate. And it is bit.ly forward slash a uh, real talk ebook okay and that's and one so we'll be able to download that from your website we'll be able to download that also uh you know most women don't know how much they need to retire and so i have created a survey called retire mad where it's nine questions that you that you ask yourself and you grade yourself and see where you're at and you can use it at intervals as you're continuing to build up your retirement money or your wealth and go to bit.ly forward slash retire math survey. All right. Brains, we're going to put all this information at the back of the interview. Okay. So that you'll be able to point and click and go into it. We're going to show you uh, what the books are. Chiquita, thank you so much. Um, that's why they call you the queen of RE, the queen of real estate. <laughs> that's why she has that beautiful blonde crown on her head. Well, uh, thank you. Can I so, can I add something, sis? I do have oh, a lot. I have a lot of fruit out there. Okay. Uh, my mentees, we have seventeen houses, five pieces of land, and a brand new short term rental is going to bring in about twenty thousand dollars a month. These are my students. Mm, mm, mm. So That's I do have testimony fruit. brains. Yes, you know, and you can go from a flicker to a flame. It, sure it is possible. And information is key, but it's nothing until it's applied. You're right. It's knowledge and then it's action. That's right. So get on it. <laughs> Brains, I need you to go in to this location right here. I need you to love, like, and share. All of these amazing interviews, all of these amazing people. I'm telling you, I'm on the grind every day trying to bring you the best and the brightest here on the edge because I want you to thrive. I want you to be excited about life. There's more going on than death, destruction, and poverty, and, you know, ugliness, and shooting, and all. There's so much more in life that we still have yet to enjoy. Take full advantage of it. Yes. I encourage it. Thank you so much, Chiquita. Uh, I love you, and I will see you. You won't come to California? That's all right. I'm coming to Kentucky. <laughs> Do that. I'll be waiting for you. All right. All right thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.